I know this is about iterables and iterators. And the first time I actually encountered iterators and iterables was this YouTube video as part of our course at Kenzie Academy. And this is a quote that I have to tell you guys. Iterables can give you, iterators can give you iterables. Passing an iterable to the iter function will give you an iterator if you ask for it. The topic was looping without a for loop. So after that, I was like, I do not want to have anything to do with iterators or iterables ever again. And it was all done with dunder methods. And for the longest time, I thought dunder methods, these don't go under there methods. You don't want to mess with dunder methods. It sounds a lot like, you know, the under, under, the under, the underworld methods. Like, just doesn't have a good vibes to it, in my opinion. So I was, after that one video, I just, I just need to know how to use a for loop. I don't need to make a loop without a for loop. That's silly. Let's just stick to what we know. So later on in my coursework, Piero, Master Madar, our resident Python instructor, he was asking for volunteers, some brave volunteers from our Kenzie cohort who's confident, willing to get out there and represent the Kenzie family, bring honor to our house. And I, at that time, this little voice in my head, the moment he told us, I thought, Cash, that's not you. That's not you. Thankfully, Peter Mayer, Peter the Player Mayer from Hangman fame, he's here. I'm so glad he could be here with us today. He stepped up, a true trailblazer. And he did the Hangman game for us, for all of us students, and then he also did it here at the PBJ. And he really just set that tone that, Kenzie students, we need to get out there. We need to represent ourselves. And I'm really thankful that I have classmates like him. Who here has had awesome teammates as a software engineer? Raise your hand. Put them all together, that's the teammates that I had at Kenzie. And the next time that came up was the second volunteer that we needed for another PBJ. Pierre asked us, we need another brave volunteer. And then I heard that same voice again, Cash, that's not you. Don't do that. Don't go under there. Dunder methods, don't go under there. Thank God, Peter, or <laughs> thank God, Eileen from the Pretty Print PP module Prodigy, she stepped up. She carried the torch, brought honor to the Kenzie household. Peter, the vanguard. Eileen, the middle guard. So we already had a very strong battalion. We just needed one more, one more member to hold that torch and carry Kenzie forward. So the third time around, this was a couple weeks back. So Eileen did this last month. And Peter, Piero came by again. So right now we're dwindling down. Our cohort's getting smaller and smaller as people are getting jobs, people are dropping out, people are doing all kinds of other things with their life. We had maybe half a dozen of us, the, the few, the strong, survive. And Piero asked us again, you know, who can come out here? Who can represent Kenzie? And again, that's cash. That's not you. You can't do that. But one of my favorite shows that had recently ended, Game of Thrones, if you remember, one of the legends, Ned Stark, Bran asked Ned, his father, he said, Father, can a man still be brave when he's afraid? <laughs> and Ned said, Son, that's the only time a man can be brave. So learning from Ned and Bran's example, I told Piero, yes, I will do it this time. If not me, then who? If not here, then where? If not now, then when? And I've regretted that moment ever since, but here we are. So we got to follow through with what we promised Piero. <laughs> we're not going to back down now. So we're going to get into baking Python, baking dictionaries with Python. This is about all I know about baking. So I hope you enjoy this. And let's shake and bake. Here we go. Let's get that secret sauce, starting it up. And yeah, well, let's, let's let it run for a second here, get started. And this is all made with Jupiter. Just before. OK. So there's two kinds of people in this world. People who've mastered dictionaries and total goobers. So I know so far there's two things that you're thinking. One, what's a goober? A, I Googled this for you, I did some homework. Peanut, that's the first definition. An actual peanut, like this is South African slang for peanuts. You don't want to be a peanut, and I'm here to help you guys out. I'm still at least a little bit of a goober, but I'm here today to help everybody get that at least this much less of a goober by the internet. The second definition for goober is a foolish person. 
And you guys are all obviously very smart people. We're all software engineers. We think very highly of ourselves, and we want to get better and improve ourselves in every way that we can. The second thing that you're probably wondering is, is all this necessary to talk about Python dictionaries? <laughs> and to that, I say yes, you total goober. But I still have hope for you, OK? So stick around, and you'll also learn something today. So, if, so who is Raymond Hedegaard, you might be wondering. If Guido, the all-father, the creator, he gave birth to the amazing software, the clean, concise code that we know as Python, if he's Kronos, Kronos gave birth to all the gods, if, you know, if you're familiar with mythology, then Raymond is Zeus. So if you don't know who Zeus is by now, you know, you're probably a goober for life, but let's keep moving. If, in other words, Mr. Hedegaard is a true grandmaster Pythonista. Real quick, let's do a quick review. What's a dictionary? It's a collection that's unordered, it's mutable, means you can change it, and it's indexed. And instantiated standard dictionary usage, you use it with curly brackets, and it's made up of key value pairs. Hash tables in Python, a dictionary data type is how we implement hash tables in Python. And lookups are made through a hashing function. They store those key value pairs, and the keys become indexes. And that makes it much faster now that the keys are indexed. So let's do just some quick review. I know you guys all look like very experienced software engineers, only a few young, really young faces. But let's define a dictionary. Here's a legendary hero, for example. Series, store my archives, character, the Kaladin, and these are different fields. You can put a list inside a dictionary. If anybody knows the series, great job. This is an amazing series. We'll have to talk a little bit about it later and nerd out. What? How many minutes? Hold up, Trey. All right, accessing values. That's how we do that. Updating dictionary, you can just put in the key that you want to update and add the new value. And then we can see that actually updated where we look here. Now our new rating order is bondsman, so that works. The items, you can use pop or print. All right, now let's start baking. This is the good stuff. So here we're going to make a custom class. So we're going to make a dictionary data structure as if dictionaries didn't exist. And we want to make them from from completely from scratch and then use that in our code from now on. So here we're going to make this, we're going to initialize the init method so we can just get our node going and then we're going to just show you this example here that in a dictionary only one, one key can have you know, one hash. So if you have the same, these sh or should be exactly the same, they should return true when we print node and we give it a value of drogon. Is that equal to node drogon? That should give us true but if we look at that, it gives us false here. So we know that's not working properly, but we're going to change that. What's up? A node, a node is just a, like a key value pair class that we're creating right now that we're going to use as an ingredient later on in our dictionary data type. So this is the first class that's going to be an ingredient later on. So this is part of the mixture we're going to use to bake our new dictionary with. So here we're going to assign the variable n. We're going to give it just one key and use our node class, make an instance of our node class. Let's see what we guess. So we just, if we just print, just put an n, and we get a reference to the memory in space and memory. So it's not really useful right now. We can use the dir function to just print out all the free methods that we get by default on any Python object. And just take a look at what some of those are. So this is on our original node class. And you know we have a bunch of dunder methods, which might be very scary at first if you're not very experienced. But we'll learn a bit more about them. Now if we use the same dir method on n, which is an instance of our class node, Remember, we had three, three attributes that we assigned to that. Now we'll get at the very bottom there, you see we have hash key and value, so those keys. So now we know that this instance is working properly. And then we can just get just the custom attributes. So we assigned Drogon before. We can see that there. What if you want to compare the hashes, which we just did before, and we saw that it wasn't working properly because Drogons weren't equal. So now let's take care of that. So dictionaries can't have duplicate keys. If the hashes are equal, you know, that's hash collision, and it's highly illegal, very unethical. You definitely shouldn't be doing that in your code. Let's print that out. So now we added this new Dunder method, and you might be wondering why is node here in the parens. We're basically inheriting from the same node class that we made. And this is just a little trick I'm using here so I can split up this one big class into separate code blocks in our Python, you know, in our Jupyter notebook here so it's easier to digest and not just one big block. OK, now we see Drogon, double equals Drogon is correct. Drogon is not equal to node regal, so now it's actually comparing them. OK, now we're going to just give it a quick wrapper method, done the wrapper so it can print itself. Because why we want to let it print itself? Does anyone know? Why? Because the Zen of Python, readability 
counts. So we want to be able to see it so it's very readable. And now when we print it out, instead of just the reference to memory, we actually get, we use the F strings and we get some human readable format, which is very important. All right, next. Now we have our, our node class and we want to start working towards our dictionary. And the indexes are what make it fast. So we're going to use buckets for that. A bucket's a list of key value pairs or the list of nodes. The small list, part of a bigger list. And it's in a format so we can access them by index. And each one of the small lists, it's a, it's a list of lists. So now we're going to just initialize our dictionary and give it a default of 10 buckets if you don't define how many you want. And that's what we're doing here. We're just going to add that, change that init method real quick. Well, we made, we made the first, first class right here, and now we're going to add it through, add another method through inheritance so that we can print the buckets using enumerate so we can get the indexes as well so it's easy to see which bucket is what. Now I'm going to just make a, make a cache stick, for example, so we can visually see these buckets and just see these methods in action. Okay, now we want to make sure we don't have that hash collision. And this is where we use that previous node class. And we're going to use the hash value from the previous node class, assign it to a variable, and we'll give it the indexes. And then here, we're going to use a for loop and then just compare the node with any new node that we try to add to it. OK, and then if there's any duplicates, we don't let that happen. All right, and here's an example real quick. It's just adding stuff to our dict. We're going to make master dict. We need to initialize this dictionary. And you can see, all right, we got, and our new f string is working. We have two variables, and they have different hashes going into different buckets. But they could have been in the same bucket. It just happened by chance these two values went into different buckets. Ooh, ooh this, is, this is live code. We got to be careful. <laughs> all right, as, as we add new methods, you got to reinstantiate the master dict to pass down each method because it's split up into all these code blocks. So as you as we can see back here, if we try to add a new value for Dreamforce, which it was already $2,300, you know, that, that Dunder method that prevents duplicates, prevents hash collision, just saved our life right there, which is great because I don't want someone to think it's $2 because they're going to have their dreams crushed if they think they can go because it's very expensive. And I wish I could go someday. So here we add the last method to the get, so we want to be able to pull stuff out. All right. And we can get stuff. We can add more stuff. And then we want to add square bracket interactivity. So you can actually use it like you do a normal dictionary. You can add stuff just using square brackets. And that's what we use Dunder get and Dunder set to do. And then real quick, we're going to show you an example that you can use you know, master dict. Again, reinitialize the dict because we added new methods. And then we can just give it the key of five and then give the value of time. And we print that. We can see it's actually working properly. All right, so credits. Piero Madar, thank you so much for consulting. The presenter I used, this is an affiliate link. Please check it out. I'm a broke student. Highly appreciate it. There's a cool mouse I have. I brought with me. I found it around the house. It's really nice. It's uh, Logitech. Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful time at Maynard. All right. Thank you guys so much. And check out Keyboard Maestro to automate it. A text, text expansion. And oh, what is this? Who's a Salesforce administrator? Wow. Not bad. I would love a job in the Salesforce field, admin preferably, working towards developer roles in the future. I'm a front-end certified engineer, Kenzie. Thank you guys so much for your time. And there's no time. Don't have any questions. So, you, you, Actually, you've got two minutes. Oh, I do? Yeah, you've got two minutes. Well, I was going to tell them all about the mouse. Hey, I totally skipped okay, my got, birthday you two, list. you got two minutes. So I made these very nice, easy-to-remember bit links for you guys. If you, just, if you already have everything in the world, you're some ex-fang, you know, senior engineer, you're just loaded. You can just buy me some shit instead. You know, I really appreciate that. But even better than that, that's why this was the next slide. Even more than just random, really awesome shit that I personally handpicked that I love will be a job. Then I can just buy it for myself and earn it. But whatever path you choose, I really appreciate your support. Just being here today also means a lot to me. Thank you guys so much and my amazing Kenzie family. It's great to see you guys out here. Okay, right. any, any questions? Any, any questions for Cash? Cameron, you got a question. Hold on. Wait. It's room. Re can you repeat the question? I do. I don't remember it. <laughs> but. I was about to tweet this thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me. I think I might be auto logged in. I think it's cash money or cash funds. <laughs> Something like that.
I only have like three posts. I did three days of 100 days of code, and then that was the end of my Twitter career. So let's, yeah, at cash underscore funds. That's, it's misleading, okay? There are no funds here. <laughs> but it's for the future, you know, see yourself, you know, envision yourself how you want yourself to be type of deal. Okay, great question. I appreciate that. All right, I think we good. You got 16 seconds left. Anyone else got a quick little question for cash? Cash under funds. We're going to make a withdrawal. And so after this experience, dunder means don't be afraid to dive under there. Dive under there, not don't go under there. So just get out there, try some new, use some new program, automate some tiny little thing like your email address that you didn't think it would ever be useful, but it'll save you so much time in the long run. So just do that for yourself. Try to figure out some ways you can use these automation tools like Keyboard Maestro and A-Text, just your signatures, any small things. It actually makes me like so happy using them every day and just realizing like, well, I don't have to type all those words again. And as a programmer, all you do